should be recording. I really wanted to make this video because I often talk to young students and young artists that tell me that they feel stuck and confused and don't really know what to do with their lives. As a teenager myself in school and later on as an adult, I was very confused about what I wanted to do with my life. Part of that I attribute to the fact that I was craving for a role model and that I don't really had one. I knew I wanted to do something good with my life and I wanted, in a way, contribute to make the life of others better as well. But I had no idea where to start, nor I had any idea what to do practically. My surroundings, the place where I lived and grew up, the suburbs of Naples, was a total disaster. We had so-called drug wars back then. There were little resources and a lot of poverty. Even going to school was an activity that had no use other than keeping children off the streets. I remember as a teen, I wanted to go to the School of Art and I wanted to study painting and sculpting, but my parents were way too worried that being exposed to that environment, as well as me traveling so far, about one hour by bus, just to go to school, was way too risky and could have been actual danger for my life. I do not want to point the finger against them. I know my parents simply had my best interest at heart. Unfortunately, the decisions that they could make back then were based on the information that they had available. 25 years ago, studying arts in Naples would have produced According to them, a person with no practical skills, possibly with a drag addiction, that would have struggled finding a job. Myself, I could not really fight this. I was only a kid, barely a teenager, and I did not really have a role model that I could have used as a reference that could have proved them otherwise. So I ended up studying economy and tourism management instead. The school was not far from home. This was the so-called safe choice. At the age of 19, after graduation, when I enrolled for the military, I ended up doing my service in the Alps, about a, a thousand kilometers away from home. There I got to meet a lot of new people coming from different places in Italy. Everyone had very different stories from mine. Some of them were interesting and fascinating. And that was the first time that I was exposed to really different realities from mine. This was the first time that I really started to consider the possibility of being in a different place than my own city, as well as having the chance to be somebody else and do something else with my life. So after the military, when I left Italy, I did it because I was thirsty for knowledge. Not theoretical knowledge, I just wanted to see what the world had to offer that my city couldn't. My travels took me to France, Germany, Austria, England, Ireland, Sweden, Denmark, Norway. These were all places where I lived and I worked, looking for a possible answer as of what to do with my life. Bear in mind that during all this time, in my head, I still had this big picture of me doing something meaningful and impactful with my life. But in all honesty, now that I look at it in retrospective, I do realize that it was just a big blur and it started to feel like an excuse behind which I was hiding and that kept me from living my life to the fullest. It took me about five years of trying different things that made me settle for studying architecture. In fact, I was 25 when I enrolled and I was very motivated. I really thought, you know, this is it. I'm going to be the next big famous architect. On my own initiative, together with some other students, I started organizing an architectural association at the university where my colleagues and I would meet weekly to discuss learning, uh, design, as well as all the extracurricular activities with the aim of making sure we would get the best learning experience, so to fast track our career. I started writing a blog, it was very popular amongst architecture students. I would organize workshops where I would teach fellow students 3D programs, Photoshop, Illustrator. Still in my head, there was this big picture of me doing something great with my life. Only this time, it felt a little bit more right. I was finally getting somewhere. Then shortly after graduation, I moved to Austria because I met my wife and that was kind of a setback. Moving to Austria was really my own choice. And in the very beginning, it was very difficult. I was really, really confused, but 
I quickly realized that I had to accept the responsibilities of me moving there. I mean, nobody forced me. It was my own choice. So I kind of had to start from scratch again because of the language and because of the, the fact that I had no local contacts nor friends that I could really rely upon. Also, I started to have internal conflicts. My interest towards architecture was shifting a bit. I loved it still, only this time I was more interested in the formalism, the aesthetics and the communication aspects more than the technical and theoretical ones. I was also slowly falling more and more in love with 3D renderings. Plus, I was struggling finding a job, so it was all very, very confusing. Not one piece of my puzzle was falling into place. So I decided to take the situation in my own hands. I got myself busy and I started to write a new blog about the digital side of architecture. I started to create some workshops where I could invite some artists to Vienna to tell us more about the job and teach us tips and tricks. And when in my heart that felt like going nowhere, I decided to challenge myself more and more and create something bigger. That was the beginning of the D2 conference. Every time that I meet younger students, younger artists that are trying to find their place within the creative industry, I realize that the reason why they get stuck, it's because they focus so much on the bigger picture. They try to achieve way too big things, way too fast, and as a result, they often fail at it. They fail at finding their path. If you are one of these guys watching this, let me tell you, I was in your shoes at one point, so I know what it feels like. I know you want to make something great and meaningful with your life, and I know that you do not want to wait endlessly for you to get there. Even though you might be moving slowly, the wait makes you feel like you're not going anywhere at all. However, and this might disappoint you a bit, when it comes to personal development, Patience is of the essence. There are three things you should focus on if you want to make the difference and get unstuck. First, you should focus on yourself. You cannot help others if first you don't help yourself. Learn something you love and become competitively good at it. Make it your speciality and make yourself an expert in that thing. Say, matte painting, 3D, typography, photography, sketching, you name it. You don't have to be the best at it, but you have to be pretty damn good. Then try to get a job and stick to it. Accept the lows and the highs that that job can offer you. And remember, no job is perfect, but I guarantee you, it will get better with time. When you get this out of the way, then start focusing on helping others. This is probably the most important thing that you can do for your personal development. When you start helping others, you make yourself into a valuable asset. And no, I'm not talking only about tutorials. Learn how you can help others solving problems. Very important, learn to distinguish between those who appreciate your help and are genuinely thankful for what you do because those are the ones who truly add value to yourself and learn to recognize those who simply like to take advantage of you. Those who take advantage of you will just exhaust you and drain you of your motivation and energy. Do understand that it takes time to learn how to manage those people. And even more, it takes time for you to learn how to manage yourself in those situations. The third and most important aspect you need to pay attention to is put one foot in front of the other. Rome was not built in a day and taking steps that are longer than your leg will not get you anywhere other than burnout. It takes time for you to create the type of art that you would like to make, to get the job that you want, to build the company that you're dreaming of. And it will take a long time for you to be recognized for your efforts. You might be a 20 something person that has all the good intentions in the world, but sometimes life plays tricks on you. Maybe you study something, you got a degree, and then later on you realize that it, it was not what you wanted to do. Maybe you hate your job. Maybe you're not happy with where you are right now. The antidote to this is for you to focus, acknowledge what your problems are, the things that make you unhappy, and realize that it is your responsibility to fix all of this. Work really, really hard, cherish all the small achievements that you can get, start to address the chaos in your life, take responsibilities, and build the reality that you want for yourself one brick at a time. The worst thing that you can do trying to fix your reality is buying yourself shit that you don't need, 
to suit your mind and escaping your reality and continuously quitting your job and running away, traveling to some cheap ass country, thinking that you're making life experience. Don't get me wrong, this might be what you want to do and it, it might be what makes you happy, or maybe this might be just the excuse that you keep telling yourself and every time that you come back to your reality, you get even more frustrated. Now, it takes courage and it takes time and more important, it takes a lot of self-awareness to start addressing these issues. If you need to make this stuff happen for yourself, and this is what you feel in your heart that you should be doing, stop wasting time, accept your responsibilities, and act now. Thanks a lot for watching. My name is Fabio Palvelli. Thank you.